Mali was dead to begin with. That's the opening line of Dickens's Christmas Carol. And what an opening line. It fills us with all sorts of questions. Who is Marley? Why is he dead? Will he come back alive? Today we hear the opening of Matthew's Gospel. In fact, it's the opening to the whole of the New Testament. And on first appearance, it doesn't have the same effect as that of the Christmas Carol. The genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah, and so on for 17 whole verses. It's not that the Christmas story isn't without action. We've remembered in our Carol services in these last couple of weeks, it's full of ancient prophecy, angelic visits, a virgin birth, political powerhousing, a tyrant king, bloodshed and heroic escapes. And yet, as we come to the book of Matthew, we can be tempted to skip over these first 17 verses or so and get to what we deem as this good stuff. But Matthew wants us still to see the wonder in these verses. And that's what I want us to think about in these sessions. Well, firstly, why a genealogy? Why this list of names? Why does Matthew start with a list of names? Now, I won't need to go over this too much because we're pretty hot on all this after our studies in Genesis. It was February the 7th of this year where we studied the first full list of names in the Bible, the first genealogy. And those who were there won't need me to remind them of what we said then, but for those who weren't, I said genealogies in Scripture show us three things. They show us that the Bible is real life. It's history, it's real. Yes, it has large time jumps from different events, but between that we see families growing, carrying on in normal life. It's not a selection of fables just put together, but real life. It's traceable. It's history. Second, we said genealogy show us that the Bible is about real people. We see snapshots into their lives, the major events, but it also shows us they lived normal, sometimes very long lives in between. With good times, sad times, illness, the mundane day-to-day -day stuff, but they were real people. And thirdly, back then we said that genealogy shows that the Bible looks forward. When people do family trees and things like that, often it's about looking back, seeing where you came from, whether you are descended from a line of famous kings and queens. But genealogies in the Bible look forward. God's promise from the very beginning, tracing the line to when that will be fulfilled. And that's why Matthew begins his book with a genealogy. He wants to establish that the Bible is real life, it's history. What he's talking about isn't a new idea made up, but steeped in history. When Jesus will make claims about Adam, Abraham, David, he wants us to show that these can be traced, they're real. Matthew would have been writing to a largely Jewish audience and he wants them to see what is unfolding in front of them, is steeped in their history. Again, he wants us to see that the Bible is real people. That's where we'll get to in the next session. But the main reason Matthew starts his book with a genealogy is the third one we mentioned, that the Bible is looking forward. And here we have hit the event that all the genealogies have been looking forward to. We don't really get genealogies in scripture after Jesus. If anything, they're seen as a negative thing. We've just been in 1 Timothy and there we saw Paul telling false teachers not to devote themselves to myths or endless genealogies. There they were trying to tie themselves back to the Old Testament, to the Old Testament people, to the law. But they weren't necessary then. Why? Well, because genealogies were working towards something, and we see that in Matthew 1, 16. Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called the Christ. And that's the wonder of this. It's the fulfilment of the whole of the Old Testament. Every promise and hope throughout the the centuries. O little town of Bethlehem, we sing, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. 
the promised snake crushing offspring of Genesis 3. Abraham's seed from whom all the families of the earth will be blessed. The descendant of David who would sit on his throne forever. forever. The saviour of whom prophets foretold is lying in the manger. And he is Emmanuel, God with us. God will make everything right. God will keep every promise he has made. Someone once described Matthew 1 as a resume of salvation history. And I love that. God's master plan unfolding. His plan to save humanity folding, unfolding before our very eyes. Think of all those pictures we studied in Genesis. The animal slain to cover the shame of Adam and Eve. The Passover lamb then. The picture of the sacrificial system throughout the Old Testament. Pointing to the lamb of God who will take the sin, away the sins of the world. Well he's now here. Being worshipped by shepherds. Or think of the one who will cover the shame of nakedness. The one who will clothe his people with righteousness is now the one who lays in a feeding trough, wrapped in swaddling cloths. So this genealogy we read, rather than being dry and dull, is the most wonderful thing, because a promised saviour has come. Do you know what this word genealogy in the Greek translates as? I didn't, but I do now. It translates as Genesis. Isn't that wonderful? In Genesis, we saw the devastation of God's perfect creation, spoilt by sin, as we saw people fall and removed from the presence of God. We saw the seriousness, seriousness of sin throughout the rest of the book and how people rebelled against their almighty Father. But we see shoots of hope all along, amongst the wreckage, because of this promised seed. And we get to Matthew and we get to genealogy. Genesis again. Beginning again. A new beginning, where all those promises of hope are now fulfilled in Jesus Christ. It's what we saw in the book of Romans, didn't we? Old Genesis in Adam, rebellion, death, condemnation. But new beginning in Jesus Christ. His obedience, his righteousness counted as mine. Peace with God and eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The writer to the Hebrews started his letter with these words long ago at many times in many ways God spoke to our fathers by the prophets but in these last days he has spoken to us by his son and that's it isn't it that's what we celebrate today joy to the world the Lord has come let that be our praise our focus today and all over this season and beyond this season. You see, after Ebenezer Scrooge had received his revelations, he said these words, I will honour Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year round. We rejoice this season and all the year round that our Saviour was born. That he went to the cross and he rose again so that we could know peace with God and a sure hope of eternity. Genealogies are wonderful because they pointed to the Saviour. And the Saviour has come. Therefore, let's finish <laughs> with the words from that Christmas carol. God bless us, every one. Amen.